we've been we've tried to incorporate the notion of gender in almost all our uh, papers so i hope that you've been able to get the basic idea of what gender and history is that there are few terms that i'm sure you've come across one is gender gender neutral gender blind uh, gender sensitive these are terms that i'm sure they are in common place use and we are trying to basically see how indian history actually is implicated as far as gender is concerned hum ye koshish kar rahe hain ki hum dekhe ki kya gender sach mein hum itihas mein pad sakte hain और जब लिखा ही नहीं गया था महिलाओं के बारे में या महिला सशस्त्रीकरण के बारे में अगर नहीं लिखा गया हा? तो हम कैसे पढ़ेंगे अब ये हम सालों से पढ़े चले जा रहे हैं कि स्रोत हैं स्रोत जो है वो पुरुषों ने लिखे या ब्राह्मणों ने लिखे या भिक्षुओं ने लिखे यू नो दीज सोर्सेज वर क्रिएटेड बाय मेजर डोमिनेट पावर्स given that they were created by major dominant powers is it possible to read either gender or the history of lower classes in it that's a question that is often asked right we in india are very lucky right because almost all sources are obsessed by women they may not be obsessed by gender but they are obsessed by women bahut likha hai mahila ke bare mein क्यों लिखा है क्योंकि वो या तो डरते थे महिलाओं से या महिलाओं की शक्ति से डरते थे या महिलाओं को निम्न और हीन दिखाना चाहते थे दे वॉन्टेड टू सरप्राइज एंड डोमिनेट वुमेन दैट इज वाई देवर राइटिंग सो मच अबाउट इट एंड ऑल ऑफ इट इज नॉट ऑल ऑफ इट बट लॉट ऑफ लिटरेचर दैट बीन प्रोड्यूस इज एक्सट्रीमली मिसोजिनिस्ट वाई मिसोजिनिस्ट वी मीन जिसमें महिलाओं को हीन बना गया है ना that is what we mean by misogynist so you have uh, the sanyas upanishads where uh, contact with women is considered to be as bad as contact with pigs eating ghee is like drinking cow urine not cow urine dog urine cow urine is fine uh, dog urine okay uh, so any pleasure and women were considered to be objects of pleasure that's another story you know i i worked on that but i'm not going to talk about that so women were whether or the famous chapter 9 of manushmriti and parts of chapter 4 which tell us that women like shudras have to be suppressed controlled regulated in various ways and that women are uh, constantly evil and uh, constantly lying unfaithful fond of jewelry fond of gossip so manushriti basically is telling us that you know women are uh, are objects of, or a category that can't be trusted and they say nothing they controlled by men now why i am telling you all these things is that i can go on how arthashastra treats them and how kama sutra treats them and how natyashastra and various shastric traditions teach what is shastra which we must why are shastra is important shastra ka prescriptive text those texts that tell us kaise hona chahiye hmm? not kaise hua tha but kaise hona chahiye this gives us uh, these are prescriptive normative texts that tell us this is the ideal situation this is the norm all right so shastra texts are particularly uh, have a particular misogynist approach given that this is the situation how do we read gender into history or historical sources hmm? now one i would like to just say that there are of course methodologies that have been um initiated and used by other disciplines like literature sociology anthropology and history women studies where one reads absences and silences ki yahan par mahila hai nahi kyun nahi hai this space does not have any women 
In this course, we are not hearing anything about women's role. Why? Then you start questioning and actually writing about the absences. Similarly, silences. All right. You write about silences, or you try and read these silences where men have a particular kind of a role, but women have none. Right. So, Raja, Rani. Raja to kuch kar raha hai, Rani kuch kar nahi rahi. So, kya Rani pura din kuch nahi karti ho ki? Think is not that, you know, they are living their lives and they are actually not doing anything, they are not engaged in anything. Is that possible? So, what does the historian do with this kind of information? Right? That there is a trader, we hear the trader going in that and the other. Then we have, obviously he has a family. What is the family doing? And the historian then thinks about this absence or this silence about actors who are implicit in history but don't have a voice. Alright? We think that this is right, this is right, this is right, so what do we do? या इनका एजेंसी क्या होगा ये क्या कर सकते होंगे कर रहे थे तो कर सकते क्या होंगे एजेंसी यू नो एजेंसी कम जा चुकी है एंड आई थिंक दैट्स वेयर माय पर्टिकुलर स्पेशलाइजेशन बिकम्स अ लिटिल इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज़ आई रीड विजुअल सोर्सेस आई रीड आर मैं स्कल्पचर पेंटिंग इतना नहीं पढ़ती हूँ तो उसमें व्हाट आई फ कि इफ एंड वन थिंग ऑन इंडियन आर्ट वन मस्ट एडमिट दैट इट इज़ फुल ऑफ़ वेमेन फार मोर वेमेन देन मेन वेरी सम इफ यू डू अ स्टैटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस यू विल फाइंड दैट इंडियन आर्ट इज़ ऑब्सेस्ड विद वेमेन राइट एंड व्हाई इज़ इंडियन आर्ट ऑब्सेस्ड विद वेमेन बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ द एस्थेटिक्स और द दर्शन that underlies in Indian art. Darshan ka vakyo? Philosophy. Philosophy or aesthetics. Aesthetics is the philosophy or the concept of beauty. Right? Now, the philosophy of Indian art in itself is called Sondarya. Aesthetics in Indian art is called Sondarya Shastra. It should be beautiful. And who is Representing the beautiful women. Right. Women are beautiful. So, in order to make a monument beautiful, what do you do? You put women on it. Because then even gods are attracted to it. You know, gods are also human in that way that they also have desires. Right? So, the desire to see beautiful women. Therefore, we have a plethora of uh, these women in various forms. They can be goddesses, they can be apsaras, they can be yakshis, shalabhanjikas, and I will be showing you some of these. Uh, unfortunately, the one, the presentation I prepared for here is not opening, so I am using another one. It will have more or less the same kind of things, maybe not in the same order that I would have liked to present, but never mind, we will make two. Alright, so, uh, as I was saying, that women, now, but when we have to read gender, just reading women is never enough. The, uh, if you are reading power relation, in relation to what? The, Notion of relationship between power and women suggests that there is somebody else who is either more powerful or less powerful. Right? A sambandh hoga, to kisi do cheez ke vich me hoga hai, to kisi teen, chaar, panch cheez ke vich me sambandh hoga. Ek yakti apne aap se sambandh rakhti ta, to mushkil hai matlab, naas sab to chhoad di jay. Okay? To, we have to read women in relationship with men or as I do also with children, right? 
how are they behaving the children, you know, or how are they shown behaving the children. That's my latest interest. But uh, I, I just want to also study how domesticity or imagined domesticity is, or is also something that we can read in visual sources. So, what do I, uh, what can we do with visual sources? I'm just going to start with a slide where you see these set. This was a German photographer in the 1970s who took photographs of men and women, right? And if you would see, why is this important? It's important because it started the concept of, uh, you know, uh, how women, even in public spaces, were not considering these spaces to be their own. Up, here, the Sarvajanic bus stop, metro. Up, imaginary park, metro, uh, bus stop. Aisi jagahein jo hai, na? Wahan par mahilaen aap dekhenge, to niche aap dekhe, niche ki room mein aapko mahilaen dekhenge. Sab mahilaen sankuchit hai. All of the women are sitting with their feet, uh, legs crossed. They've got their bags in front of them. You go to a metro, right? What do women do? They put the bags and their purses in front on their laps, right? So that they are protected from the male gaze to an extent. Or they are protecting their body. More than they are protecting their purses, they are protecting their body, right? So these and look at the bed. Huh? Look, aise bethe hai, huh? Jaise ki sari kaina unki hai. Huh? Oh, but then mahila hai kaise bethe hai? Ki humko koi guru kaina de, hum apna thoda aaram se aise bethe, ki attention thodi kam ho. Right? So I'll just show you some more. Right? Look at this. You can see these men. Yeah. This ha is a, has a term now, man spreading. Uh, man spreading, which is that men tend to spread, women tend to constrict. Right. Now, uh, this is posture. You know, one of the ways which we read in which, through which we read visual sources. Kala me, agar hum gender padhenge to kisa padhenge? Hami ye to nahi kahenge, hum weak hai, hum weak hai, aisa nahi koi bole ne aane hai, uspa lai. Ya humko satta nahi mili, satta nahi mili, aisa kuch bhi hoon wala. Humko padhna padhna hai, hum kese padhenge? Ek tarika padhne ka hai posture. Ki duye dikhaya kese gaya hai? Kya purusho aur mahilao ko fark dikhaya gaya hai? Aur uspe bhi, क्या देवियों को और अन्य महिलाओं को फर्क दिखाया गया है? So we have to also look at categories within the women. Women are not a homogeneous category. There are various kinds of women who are shown in visual sources, and we have to read those visual sources as per what was written about them, what was it inscribed about them, and how they are shown. So. One of the ways in which we read capitalistic society, all right, in post-independence world, which is is through you know how women are posed, how they pose themselves. These are some of the things that we do. All right, I had this very interesting, uh, but I will just recall it to your memory. You've seen film fair, Vogue, Cosmopolitan covers, right? How are actresses and models, women, posed? They're always standing at an angle. None of them are standing straight and looking at you, right? Tribhang is the term that we use for them. Tribhang, Akibhang, those are the terms that we use for them. Because a curved body is more sensuous and provocative than a straight standing body. 
कितनी बार तुम्हारी मम्मी ने बोला होगा इसी तरह खड़े रहो Why are these standards set for us? Because these visual codes, what we call them, are visual codes. The codes are behavior, socio-sexual behavior, social and sexual behavior. This we can say. These visual codes are set for us through many, many years of how men and women are shown. Men, now think of men. Are they asked to stand in these vague postures? तुम तेरा खड़े हो, हाँ? हमारे मेन पोस्ट ऑन जीक्यू और अदर सच मैगजीन्स, राइट? दे विल बी शोन थ्रू द मास्टर्स, राइट? सिक्स पैक्स, राइट? बट तो पावर, व्हाट इस ट्राइंग टू शो इस पावर, एंड व्हाई पावर एंड मेन आर मास्कुलिनिटी आर कंसलेटेड is because of their supposedly social roles as protectors, as he men, as heroes, whatever you want to call them, right? So these visual codes are not something that has come up now. These visual codes we need to read backwards, huh? right from ancient Indian period or ancient class, ancient art. Right? I won't, I am going to read both of these, but I just want you to understand that Aaj nahi pana hai ye, ye bohat pehle se chala ra hai, how? And that is how we read gender and that is how we read power in relationship. Agar mein mahilayam ke baare mein baat karo bhi, to abhi kese pata lagi ga ki woh feminine or femininity ke various notions को दर्शाती हैं लेकिन मैस्कुलिनिटी के नोशन नहीं होता, तो वी नीड्स टू बी रीड देम टुगेदर। नाउ आई एंड दिस इस गुस्ताफ कुर्बे, आई डोंट नो इफ यू हॉर्ड ऑफ हिम, एंड नाइनटीन सेंचुरी फ्रेंच पेंटर ऑफ द रियलिज्म, द मूवमेंट कॉल्ड रियलिज्म, बट यू वुड सी व्हाई आई टेकन दिस इस that how artist looked at women and this is the artist studio where he is going to paint a nude now there is of course john burgers talked about it if anybody anyone is familiar with Vedo, this is a seminal book that was written based on a bbc documentary please note this down ways of looking it's a very very important book john berger b-e-r-g-e-r uh, where he has made this very important difference between the nude and the naked. What is the nude? Nude is a very self-conscious cultural object, which is something that an artist will paint, a sculptor will sculpt. That's a nude. It's a nude study. This is a nude study. It will come out as a nude. Naked is unclothed. That woman who was just raped was naked. She was not nude. Right? So, a conscious, conscious object is nude. Something that is either part of behavior or you know, she came out of the bath naked. She didn't come out of the bath nude. That's that's the kind of thing. She took a bath nude, or he took a bath naked. There there is a difference between that. And very importantly, he says that men appear. Men, you know, they appear in public, or you you read men as appearing. Women see themselves being looked at. Manilai. Hamesha, they are always aware of being looked at and they are always are conscious of how they are appearing to the world and that is why their behavior codes and the way we look at women is mediated by this look being looked at. But anyways, I am, I go to more familiar territory which is Indian. Okay, so you are well 
aware of me. जब बोर हो जाओ ना तो हाथ खड़ा कर लेना और मैं बिल्कुल ये मत सोचना कि मैं बुरा मानूंगी बिल्कुल नहीं बुरा मानूंगी जब भी आपको लगे कि बहुत हो गया मैं तो बोलती रहूंगी मेरा क्या है एक्सेप्ट कि मुझे एक मीटिंग में जाना है पर आई कैन गो ऑन एंड ऑन अबाउट दिस पर आई विल नॉट टू माय फेवरेट विश्व राइट वन ऑन टॉप विज वॉट इज नोन एज भूतेश्वर यक्षी एंड दिस इज कठौनी का कुआ both are from mathura which is my again favored uh, area of expertise right so now what you are looking at are one look at that these are all part of stupas or stupa railings or vihara railings these are the two things that you have here we have to samasya vihara samasya hona monastery complex is that Right. All right. Now, imagine. Think about this. That there are two kinds of money. Watch out. Two kinds of money. Kings, kings, patronage. Big show. Patronage. Merchants are doing, rulers are doing, art, art, actors are doing.
or somebody who contains me, somebody who has me, right? Who is offering it to everyone, you know, it's a universal giver. That's the interpretation that was the second interpretation, also within the same thing. Now, if you are a gender historian, what do you do with an imagery like this? I ask you. Just, you know, how can you read something like this? Is it a universal giver or does it have erotic overtones as is there in the last of these pictures? Now I give you, just to reinforce this notion, I have these two, one is a very famous Vidargan Yakshi, similar period you have the Parkham Yaksha, right? Now, more or less they both are wearing dhotis, right? Both are standing straight. What is the difference, if any, that you can think of in terms of their posture and their meaning? If you were a historian and you were reading history through visual sources, you say one is a Vidarga, one is a Yaksha and one is a Yaksha. Okay, you've got that. I don't know if I have the Vidisha Yaksha Yaksha. But I just want to just ponder over this that there are very different visual codes at work here. Where the woman is holding a chauri in her hand, she is an attendant to somebody, right? Now, um, Doris met Srinivasan says she was prostitute, right? According to one of the later historians, recently, I think in 2018 article, she said she was a prostitute and she said that, you know, in Arthashastra, it says that there were women uh, attendants to the king who were prostitutes and so on. Uh, these I won't do. Yeah, I just want to bring to your notice that why I said clothing and posture is important. Right? On one side, you have a woman who is carrying water on her head, which is one of the offerings to the stupa. Right? She is clothed, she's not naked. On the same railing, there are not that in the whole world you will get this adhanag mahila. If you wear a mahila in the world, then it means that all the mahila are not showing one way. There are women who are shown differently because of the different gender roles that they play in the scheme of the things. So we have to remember that not all women were imagined in a similar manner. Now that I've got the hang of this, this is very interesting, right? And women also are, look at the one in the middle, one of my favorites. Again, no, I have too many favorites, uh, okay? But if you would see the one in the middle, she's got a goblet, a goblet of wine in her hand. So she's drinking wine. Okay. Now, she, not only is she just drinking wine, but there is a fellow upstairs, up there, who is drunk. Huh? So, is there is some kind of a um, sympathetic relationship of wine drinking by the woman in the middle. Now the woman in the middle uh, is not just drinking wine, but she means, you know, people will understand her to be an object of pleasure. Not just what she's drinking, but her, the entire body of the woman is also an object of pleasure. Right? And compare it to the woman holding, this is known as a prasadika, because she's holding offerings. Prasad, 
for the Buddha and the Stupa. Alright? So she is standing straight. She is semi clothed, more or less clothed. She is, uh, you know, the, the tone, the posture, the clothing, the way you will look at it is very different because they are all serving different functions, visual as well as gender functions. So I won't go into all of them because then I will work just between this. Right? Mm. I'll just show you these because I'll, you know, I'll be taking up too much time. I've already taken 45 minutes. This is, uh, these are just pictures of how men imagined women in the Renaissance. This is a very famous painting by Rubens of uh, Venus looking at herself. So Venus as an erotic, uh, as an erotic object, you know. Uh, they're always seen women are seen as looking at themselves. I mean, in Kahi Dekha Hai Purush Apne Samne Shisha Dekhi Dekhaya Gaya Apne Aapko Nihar Rai Because men are not seen to be objects of beauty. Right? Women have to be shown as objects of beauty. So they, not only are you looking at women, but women are always looking at themselves. You know? They are um, enhancing their beauty. Apni sondarre ko barhaadre hai. Or apni aap ko nihaadre se wo sondarre baadta hai. You know? So these are um, technologies of the cells. What we would call in general history technologies of the cells. Okay? This is a nude. This is not naked. So, uh, there are very many more that I can go into. Okay, I'll just, I think I'll try and end with this Toran Shalbhanjika. Now, Shalbhanjika is a very, very deliberate object of um, Alankar. Alankar would be uh, Alankar. <coughs> embellishment of a stoop, vihara, prasada, whatever you have. Okay? It's a very deliberate object. Now this is from Sanchi. This is gate number. This is the northern gate, I think. To, yeah, it is the northern gate. Right. Now, what you see is that this young woman is holding a shala. Uh, 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 she is holding a branch of a tree. Right? There is this notion in India which is known as Dohar uh, that a woman, uh, a tree flowers from the touch of a woman. So various trees flower at different touches. Please look at Malvika Agnimitram Kalidas, the third act. That's based entirely on this. It's beautifully written. Kabhi aapka man kare kuch padne ka, to please isko padne. So, they, a tree will uh, blossom if a young woman laughs at it or spits wine on it or touches it with her left foot. Vam par aghat, that's the term that's used. Alright, now, this has been translated into an architectural element known as a Shalbhanjika. A woman breaking the branch of a tree. Bhanji is to break. This is a very interesting element because in the Buddha Charitra it says that when Buddha was going to leave the palace, Shudodan the father set out all the harem women to seduce him and tempt him so that he doesn't leave the palace, right? And one of them, amongst the various other postures, one of them was leaning out of the window like a Toran Shalbhanjika, right? So obviously Toran Shalbhanjika is already a symbol of beautiful women, right? And uh, also, uh, and there are various other references to it, but I won't go into that. Now, I just 
just in, in comparison on the same kind of entrances that from Sanchi, that from Pital Khora, you have Yakshas. Yakshas are protectors of entrances and they are all standing straight, they are all looking uh, regal and strong. So the, the codes of masculinity are very different from the codes of femininity that are built into Indian art and we can try and read how gender has been built into these notions. I'm not even going into narratives because then we come to Jatipas, then I'll have to tell you all the stories. Huh? So I will leave you at this. Hopefully you got some kind of an insight into how we can use sources, especially visual sources, in various ways. Right? So, if you have questions, I am always there.